Hey, Ava. Do you have a minute? It's about the food at the wedding. My parents want the highest grade of food. Your parents seem to be foodies. I understand their desire to have a delicious meal. But if we order the highest grade course, the price will go up by about $40 per person. Isn't that too much for our budget? You know what? My parents and I want to make all of our guests happy. And yet, don't just say we don't have enough budget. I understand what you're saying, but I'm sure the guests will be happy even if the food is not the highest grade. The wedding place has a reputation for delicious food. I don't think we have to go out of our way to get the higher rank. Are you still talking about money? Well, your family is poor. Poor? That's not true. Both my parents are still working. My parents said they would pay for whatever it goes over the budget, so we can do whatever we want. My parents would feel bad if they did that. Because you and your parents are so stingy. It's no wonder. You don't have to talk like that. Hey, Ava, do you have a minute? Sure, I was just eating dinner. What's up? I'm discussing the groom's side of the guests with my parents. We're going to have about 20 more guests than we had planned. Can you please invite 20 less people on the bride's side? 20? I don't want to reduce the number of people from my office and my friends from school. I'll have to ask my parents to reduce the number of their acquaintances. Please do. But with 20 people, I don't think I can invite anyone other than relatives. Both of my parents are still working. They said they wanted to invite a few people from their workplace. Can you at least reduce the number of guests by 7 or 8? I think I can do 12 people in all. Why? Because we have some people we plan to invite. Why do you care about them? What? The groom's side is more important than the bride's side, no matter what you think. We don't need people from your parents' workplace. We don't even know them. Then what about people from your parents' workplace? My parents are popular even by the younger staff. So of course, we're going to invite them. They're not like your parents. What do you mean by that? What difference does it make? It means we can't adjust the number of people because of your parents. What? That's... That's a terrible thing to say. Don't you think you're being unreasonable? Isn't it obvious? My parents are saying they're willing to pay more for the wedding. So don't you think they should be the one to invite more people than yours? You're being too arrogant. You change the food to the highest grade and change the flowers and gifts without consulting me. You and your parents change everything, right? And you did it without consulting me or my parents. Isn't that natural? I'm the man who's going to be the head of the family. If I just do whatever you say, I won't be able to save my reputation. I don't think it's about your reputation. We're going to be husband and wife. I think we should discuss it with both families. What do you mean, both families? Your family is poorer than my family. The lower-ranked ones should just be quiet and do as we say. That's what my father used to say. If you're poor, then you just stay poor and shut up and do as you're told. If you interfere too much, it will become a big problem. I can't believe what you're saying. My parents aren't meddling. I'm just referring to the fact that you have changed everything without consulting us. And you're the one who's changing things all on your own, right? Huh? You're going to be my wife, right? Yeah? If you're going to be my wife, you'll have to follow my orders. Huh? You're always nagging on the decisions I've made, aren't you? Can't you just say yes? When you come to be my wife, I'm the one you have to take care of the most. Then my parents. Then yours. That's why you shouldn't go against my decisions. Why do you rank them so high? I don't understand. Because you won't shut up and listen to me. And now, your parents are interfering too, right? You don't know enough about being a wife. 
Oh my goodness. Anyway, what I say is absolute. You'll have to follow my decision. Remember that. Hey, Henry. The time of the wedding can't be changed now, right? I've never heard of changing it the day before. Why? Well, my father hasn't been feeling well since this morning. He says he's dizzy and lightheaded. He didn't drink too much or something, did he? No, no. He never drinks at home. Oh, I got it. What? He doesn't love you enough. What do you mean? He's sick because his beloved daughter's wedding is tomorrow. He doesn't care about our marriage. That's why he's feeling dizzy. Our marriage has nothing to do with his condition. What if my father is seriously ill or something? I don't care about your father. If you're worried, take him to the doctor now. There's a clinic nearby, right? That's what I'm suggesting. He says he won't see a doctor until after the wedding. He says he has to make sure everything is okay. Well, then it sounds like there's no problem, is there? We are going to have a wedding as planned, just like your father wished. But I'm worried. Can't we move the time so he can get some rest? What are you talking about? We're not the only ones involved in the wedding, okay? A lot of people are involved, including the wedding staff, family members and guests. How can we change the time because of your father's dizziness? You're such a cold person. Don't you get worried when your parents are sick in bed? I'm telling you to use common sense. Can you change many people's schedule for one person? Ava, calm down a little. Henry. Besides, I told you, if you're going to marry into our family, I'm the first priority. Then our parents... And your parents are the lowest priority. Changing the time of the wedding for your father's sake is outrageous. And at this hour, the day before? Of course I'll be the one calling people, okay? I'm going to call each and everyone who's coming to the wedding. You're stubborn. There's no way things are going to go as you wish. I've got to get ready for tomorrow, so I'm going to end this conversation now. Okay. Henry, are you at the venue yet? We're on our way. We'll be there in a few more minutes. I'm sorry to tell you this, but... On the way to the venue, my father was in a car accident. I just got the call and he's unconscious. What? He should have come with me. He said he still felt dizzy this morning, so I guess that's why he had the accident. I'm going to the hospital now, so can we cancel the wedding? Huh? What are you talking about? I explained the situation to the staff at the ceremony. The staff told me that if he was unconscious, I should go to him right away. I don't know how my father is, so I'll go to the hospital right now. Wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. Have you left the hall yet? I just left. It's good that I got out before I got dressed. I was still in my clothes, so I could leave the venue right away. You think you can do that? What are you doing? Our wedding is more important than your father. What? My father is unconscious. He might be in a serious condition. I'll regret it for the rest of my life if something happens to him. All the relatives are here, so come back quickly. There will be a lot of guests at the reception. If you think about the guests, the reception is more important, right? Why should I prioritize the wedding when my father is unconscious and in danger? Why should I put your relatives first? My father is more important than the wedding. What are you talking about? Don't be so selfish. You're the one who's being selfish. My father is unconscious. I may never see him again. How can you put the wedding reception first when... You know what? This is enough. There will be no wedding with you. Let's call off the marriage. Huh? What are you talking about? Calm down a little. What's the point of calling off the wedding? We've been preparing for months, remember? I really want to call off the marriage. If I marry someone like you, there will be a lot of unhappiness ahead. 
You're going to hell. What? Just calm down. You're going to ruin the wedding and the reception. There are a lot of big wigs coming today. I'm canceling the wedding and reception. What's with all the big wigs? How dare you say such a thing? What the hell? I know something. Know what? You're having an affair with a girl in accounting at work, aren't you? What are you suddenly saying? Are you crazy? Actually, I started getting threatening emails a few days ago. Threatening emails? Yes, they were all about you. What? Don't get married to Henry. If you don't stop, I'll come and mess up the wedding. I'm Sarah, the accountant. I'm supposed to get married to Henry. I was getting these messages every day. I stopped opening it halfway through because it was getting annoying. I don't know about that. Oh, you have a lot of bigwigs coming over today, don't you? We can check it out, right? Idiot. Don't do that. It's disgraceful. It's not disgraceful. What kind of plan is it to cheat on me before we're married? Can you tell her that I'll talk to her later? Don't do anything selfish. If you do it, I won't forgive you. That's what I'm trying to say. The marriage is called off and you're just a stranger to me now. Let me tell you something. I'll charge you plenty of alimony. What do you mean alimony? You're the one who ruined the wedding and reception. I'm not going to let you get away with it. I'm the one who's going to charge you for the wedding and the fees. I'm going to have to go through a lawyer later. But first and foremost, I'm worried about my father. So I'm going to do it later. I'll be in touch, so wait for it. Hi, Ava. I'm sorry about the other day. The wedding and reception were suddenly cancelled, and I was panicking too. I know I was harsh with you. I'm sorry. So, how's your dad doing? I'm not sure yet, but he's stable now. I guess the rest depends on his own vitality. I'm sure he'll do his best to get his strength back. Well, that's good to hear. Don't worry about the ceremony. It's not cancelled. It's been postponed. We can hold the wedding again after your father gets better. What are you talking about? What? I said I'm calling off the wedding, didn't I? What? Did you say that? I was too upset to remember. And I'm not going to call off my marriage. Huh? You're trying to avoid paying damages to the wedding hall, aren't you? What are you talking about? I'm serious. I've talked to the staff at the wedding hall too, since it's true that I caused them trouble. I see. And I heard something. Right after that, the woman with whom you had an affair came barging in, didn't she? What? And then she took a pair of scissors and ripped up the wedding dress I was supposed to wear. She also knocked over the entire table set. It looks like she broke most of the glassware. Even the staff was surprised. You know that much? The staff is going to charge you for the damages for messing up the reception hall and for ruining the dress. Maybe you and she can split the charge. I'm sure the two of you could discuss about it. Oh no, I had nothing to do with that. She did that on her own. More importantly, I'm marrying you. Let's wait for your father's recovery and discuss the date of the wedding. That's not going to happen. Huh? I'm fed up with your arrogant attitude. I don't know if you want to pretend to be a husband or what. You are the most priority? You've got to be kidding me. I don't want a self-centered man who doesn't have a shred of kindness in his heart. Don't say that. I'm sure I've had my moments of arrogance. But that was just me trying to show off my manliness to you. Manliness? If you think looking down on people is manliness, I despise you. You even cheated on me. Anyway, I'm not going to marry you. Don't say that. I love you, Ava. I'm sorry your father had an accident just when we were about to get married. 
I'll wait as long as you want me to. You just don't want to pay for the damages in alimony and don't want the world to find out that you've been cheating on me. What are you talking about? No, I'm not. You always put yourself first. If you're going to marry me, it should only be a means to protect yourself. I would never do anything to bring misfortune to myself. Too bad. That's not true. I love you with all my heart. That's why I'm willing to take the time to marry you. You can declare it to all the guests. Stop it! You're making me nauseous! Most of all, I can't forgive you for disrespecting my father. I can't forgive you for taking my father's life so lightly. You know that maybe he would have lost his life? I know. I am truly sorry. And yet you told me that your wedding and reception were more important than my father. I would never marry someone like that. Don't be ridiculous. I'm going to give you the maximum punishment and say goodbye. Maximum punishment? I told you, in addition to damages, I'm going to charge alimony. In the last two days, my lawyer made the woman you had an affair with tell me everything. You've been together for a year now. Isn't that when you started dating? No, it wasn't. What is she talking about? Whenever I couldn't see you because you had to work late, it seemed like you were always seeing her. She submitted a lot of photos as evidence. I'm so grateful. I didn't even have to ask for them. Some of them were taken in bed. I have all of her statements on tape, so I can charge her the maximum amount of compensation. Oh, no. I wonder if this woman has a little trouble understanding. She even went into a lot of detail, even though she's going to be charged herself. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just grateful. Wait a minute. I really want to marry you. We got engaged, and if nothing happened, we would have gotten married that day. Isn't that right? I'm telling you, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to marry a selfish person like you. My father's life is far, far more important to me than yours. I'm sure I'll be busy taking care of him for some time to come. Don't contact me anymore. Don't be so cold. I'll do whatever you want me to. I'm sure you'll have to go through a lawyer from here on out. I hope you'll do as you're told and proceed with the procedure. Ava, wait. Think again. We loved each other, remember? Enough! I'm going to turn off my phone now because I'm at the hospital. And I'm going to block your account. Well, goodbye. Ava, don't say that. Please, please reconsider. I'm sorry for everything I've done. I'm sorry. After that, I filed a claim for alimony against Henry and the woman he cheated on me with through my lawyer. Because there was a lot of evidence that the cheating partner submitted on her own, Henry couldn't even make any excuses, so they both paid me in one lump sum. On top of that, Henry was also charged cancellation fee and damages from the wedding venue. He had to borrow a lot of money to pay it all back. Security cameras were installed at the wedding venue, and we were able to see the cheating partner tearing the dress to shreds, and the scene of Henry and the cheating partner struggling with each other. For some reason, his affair became rumors in the company. He is now working alone with everyone looking at him coldly. The partner who had an affair with him could no longer stand the cold stares from those around her and left the company. I don't know what happened to them after that. I heard that Henry was working part-time at night because he couldn't keep up with the repayments from his company's income alone. He deserves it. It's none of my business anymore. I decided to buy an apartment with the alimony they paid me. I am relieved that my father has regained his health and is now doing well in his rehabilitation. From now on, I would like to make a fresh start and devote myself to my work. I will leave romance behind for a while. Hey, Isabel, before I tell you every single time, you paid the bill, right? Hello, Nancy. Bill? What are you talking about? Don't be silly. 
and left the credit card bill at the entrance so that you can notice. Uh, yes, you left an envelope. Don't worry, I didn't open it. Oh god, you wasted my thoughtfulness and what, are you trying to harass your mother-in-law? Huh? Harassing you? What kind of thoughtfulness was it? The envelope was under your name. I would look at it if it was addressed to me or Sean, but I would never look at an envelope addressed to you. I put it where you could see it on purpose. It's your job to read my intentions. I'm trying to let you know in a roundabout way to express how much I care about you, but you're not a good wife if you ignore that kindness. You don't understand unless I tell you straight out. Anyway, please transfer a thousand dollars in my bank account as soon as possible. A thousand dollars? Nancy, what did you spend that much amount on? I went out for a French course dinner with Sean and John, my two lovely sons. And I also bought some new clothes, so that's a total payment of a thousand dollars. Huh? I haven't heard anything from Sean, not my business. I thought I should give Sean a gift for a quitting job and John for getting a job. It's a celebration for my beloved sons. I'm sure he didn't tell you out of concern for you. He must be scared of you. If you want to be a good wife, just shut up and transfer a thousand dollars. It's not like I wanted you to ask me out too, but this is too much. I mean, this is such a waste of money and we have our lives to live. I can't pay you. Well, what a heartless person. You don't do any housework or take care of Sean, and you dare to stand up against your family. Why did he marry such a hopeless person like you? Excuse me, I do housework like cleaning and laundry. I can't cook dinner because of work, but I cook meals for a week on the weekends. Shut up. Don't make excuses like that and admit what I say. Meals? Oh, that disgusting looking object. Are you asking me to eat that thing? You've got to be kidding me. Nancy, that's too much. I have to work every day and do housework on my days off, and I'm doing the best as I can to cook meals. If you don't like it that much, I'd appreciate it if you could cook for us once in a while since you don't have a job. Well, you want a mother-in-law to cook for you. You should know who I am. You're so brazen, you dare to use me? You're a truck driver, aren't you? Is it because you work with men that you have such a big attitude? You're a truck driver woman, but you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. How can you work? Nancy, that's old-fashioned. These days, my company has a lot of female staff, and they do less physical work. By the way, I heard that John got a job at a transportation company. Oh, you knew. He got a job at Shooting Star Transportation, a famous local company. It's different from the low-class transportation companies where an incompetent people like you would work. No matter how useless I am, it doesn't mean that the company is also low class. You're really a person who never stops talking. You are a useless and incompetent wife, that's all. Just shut up and listen to me. Anyway, transfer $1,000 to my account as soon as possible. Also, I have to eat delivery food every night because of your tasteless leftovers. Make sure you transfer an additional $500, understand? I mean, that's not enough, not even close. That's more than what we pay for our own food. We can't afford that much. It's the money you guys spend, so please pay by yourselves. I'm giving you a chance to be a good wife because you're useless, so why don't you thank me? If you can't even do that, then I can't help you anymore. If you despise the feelings of family, I will ask you to leave this house. I'll talk to Sean about it. What's the point? Even if you talk to that boy, my orders are absolute. Even he will agree with me. I'm in a hurry too. If you haven't made the transfer by tomorrow, be prepared. I'll punish you severely. Hey, Sean. Can I talk to you about something? What is it? Your mother wants me to pay her $1,500 of her credit card bill and the food expense. What? $1,500? But no choice if mom said so. It's $1,500. She doesn't even work and I can't believe she's spent that much. And why didn't you tell me that you went to a French restaurant with her and John? Oh, <laughs> I forgot. She treated me since I quit my job. She is so rude. Why don't you say anything to her? She's your mother. I'm the one who gets told off. You know how hard she treats me, how much she punishes me around. Well, yes. Your wife is having a hard time and you never tell her. When I heard she was throwing away my meals, I was speechless. I'm sure she didn't mean to. Mom says no, and I can't help it. She's getting old, and you'll be safe as long as you listen to her and don't make a big deal out of it. I do my job. I do the housework. I'm tired, but I'm still trying my best to take care of the house. 
She tells me I'm incompetent even though I do my best. Your mother treats me like a slave. That's an exaggeration. Mom is just a little bit, well, outspoken. I don't even have my husband on my side. I don't know if I can take it anymore. I'm hurt. Don't say that. Just hang in there. Enough. It's not worth talking to you. Isabel, did you transfer the $1,500? I didn't. I clearly told you that I can't, so you have to do something about it yourself. You are so stubborn, aren't you? What do you think you are doing after I told you so clearly yesterday that even you, an incompetent person, could understand? Just by transferring $1,500, I will forgive you for your selfish behavior up to now. $1,500 is a lot of money and not for a necessary expense, but for a luxury expense. I can't pay it. Aren't you the one who is acting selfishly? That's quite a thing to say, isn't it? You really are a useless wife. You got some nerve to go against me. Don't you understand? As I have told you many times, my orders are absolute. Yesterday, I told Sean that you demanded the payment of $1,500. He told me too. I heard that you said I treat you like a slave. Even though you were incompetent, were you aware that you were a slave? That made me laugh. But a slave means absolute obedience. You are not conscious enough to be a slave if you resist me. I don't like that kind of treatment. I am not your slave. He even told that to you? I can't believe it. Of course, he's my precious son. He's a good boy who listens to everything his mother says. Of course, John too. They are the sons who never hide anything from me because of the way I raise them. My sons are perfect, unlike some incompetent trash wife who can't even be a slave. I'm sorry for making meals for the whole week at once, but as you know, I'm working. When I married him, both of you and he agreed to it. Even if I could forgive you for making the food for the whole week, I didn't think you were this incompetent wife who wouldn't even listen to her mother-in-law. He was completely fooled and so am I. I guess I'll have to ask for a divorce. What? Why would you do that? You are a woman but you work in the transportation business and you are a wife but you can't even listen to your mother-in-law's orders. You are so pathetic. I feel sorry for my son. I'll tell him to leave this trash right away. He's too good for you. He's going to get a well-class, good-natured wife who is kind to me. If you asked him to get divorced, would he listen to you right away? We love each other, you know. You're an idiot. I'm sure he wants to get divorced too. He said he doesn't want a strong-willed wife like you who disobey his mother. Oh no, I've lost hope to both of you. Say whatever you want. A trashy wife like you will never get married, work for a transportation company for the rest of your life. I'll have him write the divorce papers as soon as possible, so you better respond. Yes, ma'am. Well then, I don't even want to see your face, so I want you to pack up your things and leave today. Don't ever step into our house again. It's like the air is polluted when you're in my house. I understand. I will never have anything to do with you and your family again. Hey, Isabel, what is going on? Can you explain? Is it true that Sean was fired from the company? What is it? It seems like you're really in a panic. We are divorced, so I am a stranger to you. But well, let me tell you, it's true. You didn't know? That can't be true, because he said he left that company to change jobs. I heard that he was negligent and absent without permission, and turned on his boss who warned him about it. It seems that kind of repeated attitude went too far. That's right. He's being sued in civil court by a woman who seems to be the victim. He actually did that? He never said a word about it to me. Oh no. Isabel, I want you to get back with him and pay the settlement. You still have feelings for him, don't you? I can't take care of him because John's going to make a lot of money. I don't want a son who did such a shameful thing. Is John the only one you don't want? He don't know anything. From what I've heard, he also did sexual harassment to female colleagues at the company, and that's probably one of the reasons. Huh? It seems he caused an accident because of DUI while on duty and were fired from his previous transportation company. He hit the fact and didn't report it to the company that offered him the job, even though his license was suspended. It's outrageous that he would mispresent his employment status and even more outrageous that he would DUI while on duty. That's not true. A serious John would never do such a thing. If you don't believe me, why don't you ask himself? I mean, I'm not sure when you will be able to talk to him. I don't think he will be at your house. What do you mean? I heard that Shooting Star Transportation reported for false declaration and concealment. He is accompanied by the police on suspicion of fraud and is now in custody at the police station. What? What do you mean? 
That can't be. He's not at home, and he's not answering the phone. Isabel, who are you? Are you stalking him? How do you know his history? Stalking? No way. He's not even worth it. Actually, it's because I'm the president of Shooting Star Transportation. Huh? What? I was at an important business meeting when he was having an interview for the job, so I didn't notice because I didn't see him. That's a lie. An incompetent person like you can't possibly be the president. I won't allow you to try to trick me. I will sue you. If you don't trust me, why don't you see your website? Even John should have at least checked the president of the company he went to interview with. It is listed at the top of the page with my real name and photo. Well, I'm a professional myself, so I wouldn't have hired someone like him anyway. Oh, it is true. What a surprise! Do you understand now? Thank you for being so surprised that you lost your words. He also applied for the job without knowing that I am the president of Shooting Star Transportation. I inspected his license number and found out that his license was suspended. I checked with his former employer and found out that he had an accident due to DUI while on duty. Furthermore, they told me that he had damaged the company truck, was fired, and had been ordered to pay compensation. I do not believe it. I won't believe it. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. I don't believe that my great boy was fired for DUI. Do you know DUI is a criminal offense, regardless how many times he has done it? Did he have any money? Where did he get the money to pay the fine? Huh? The fine? He needed ten thousand dollars to get into a company, so I borrowed it from payday loan. Don't tell me he used that money to pay for the DUI fine. It seems I was right. What is going to happen to John? Because of the fraud, will he be put into jail? If he gets a criminal record, it will be hard for him to get another job. Oh no! Sean is also being sued, and even John is being arrested. Those brothers are shit. They are doing the same thing. I'm so glad I got divorced before I got involved. Thank you. Hey, Isabel, you're the president of Shooting Stars, right? You have power, right? Since we once had a relationship, could you get John hired and keep quiet about the violations and suspensions? You must make a lot of money if you are the president, right? You can cover the necessary expenses for me and my two sons. No, think about it. It was me, the president, who made the decision to turn him down, right? There is no way I would hire him. I cannot live forever with a devilish mother-in-law who treats me like a slave and mommy boy sons who cannot support their wives. Let's start over, please. Don't say like that. I'll be nice to you and I won't call you incompetent. If the president of Shooting Star Transportation is a relative of mine, I'd be proud of myself. Uh, I'm sorry, but I politely decline. You were proud of your sons, weren't you? Do your best to clean up your scum brother's mess. I have nothing to do with this. Goodbye. Please don't contact me again. I'm busy. Oh no! Wait a minute, Isabel. Help us. John, who had his job offer turned down, was charged with fraud for filing a false report to Shooting Star Transportation. He was also found to have been driving without a license during the period of suspension. My ex-husband. Settled with the victim of sexual harassment, and fortunately, the lawsuit was discharged. The settlement was ten thousand dollars. He had no such savings. He cried out to his mother for help, and she started to borrow money from payday loan. She was forced to repay about twenty thousand dollars in debts and pay off a truck worth few thousand dollars. Isabel and Sean moved to a public housing and are living while working and paying back the tremendous amount of money. On the other hand, my recent situation is that Shooting Star Transportation is a company where a lot of women work, and the fine service we provide has become famous, and it has even been featured in a magazine. As a female president, I am also working hard to make the company bigger and bigger by doing my best. Of course, I am also improving myself and looking for a new love. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.